Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started going over our announcements. Um, we are just going to go ahead and not plan for Bible study this week. We want you to study your Bibles at home. We always want you to do that. But we've just had so many times where Wednesday is like a week by week. We're making decisions on the fly about whether we have it or not. We're just going to go ahead and say um, no Bible study this week because we do have snow and cold weather coming. And hopefully we're back next week, but we'll see. This microphone sounds good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, it sounds good. Uh, we, (laughs) yeah, yeah, he will. (laughs) Um, we are still going to plan on having men's group here at the church on Fridays at 1 PM. We will have Sunday school today, pre-K through sixth grade. Do you have a date yet for the next announcement? Okay. We have an anonymous couple that is donating um, funds for us to be able to do carpet in our building. Um, it's something that, <laughs> it's, it's a huge blessing, and we inherited this carpet when we bought the building, and if you look around, you'll notice areas where it's been curling up for 15 years, and we just, I don't know why we've never done it before. Um, but we're going to get new carpet in here. And when that, what? (laughs) Anyway, when the time comes that we get this scheduled, we are going to need some able-bodied people who can come and help us stack chairs, move chairs, get them, um, probably just go into the basement, right? Take all the chairs to the basement. They will come in and lay the carpet during the week, and then we'll come back probably on a Saturday and set up the sanctuary again. Um, so it's not just the chairs. It's all the equipment. It's everything. It's everything that is upstairs needs to go downstairs. So it's going to be, you know, just psych yourself up for it. You, you were made for this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... The last thing that we want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for coming to church and spending time with all the people that you love. And we have one more announcement. Um, Jerry is going to come up and show us something that she has been working on. Do you want me to hold it and do your little nose? This is my designer purse. What do you think? Oh, I probably don't need this. I've got a pretty big mouth. Okay, this is my designer purse, um, which most designer purses cost, what, $150? I don't buy them, so I have no idea. (laughs) But I'd like to show you, um, I really don't think I need that. Can everybody hear me? It's for the video. Oh, okay, all right. Um, I do not sew, but I can buy blankets. (laughs) Um, Rose, she's a lady in my women's Bible study, um, she sews these, and you can see there are different little compartments. One is for wool blankets, one is for a tarp, one is for like hot Lipton soup, hot coffee, instant coffee, hot chocolate, um, and then back here is a little ring that we'll put a little teapot on. And it goes to the homeless. Um, the, the dog food bags is weatherproof. So if you have dogs and you buy like the 40 or 50 pound dog food, please save them. Um, and Rose is sewing these together so that the homeless can use them. And so this is going to be an ongoing ministry um, that we do. And I would love for, you know, anyone to join in and help. You can buy blankets. You can buy tarps. Um, There's even a little water bottle holder in here. Um, They're desperate for, like, Gatorade to put uh, vitamins back in their body. But uh, we did just an emergency run, and in two weeks we gathered up 37 blankets and 27 tarps um, because we knew that it was gonna be really, really cold weather. Now, I don't have the stats in Rush County, but in Shelby County, there's at least 45 homeless people um, that sleep under bridges. 
So there is a desperate need. So our my women's Bible study has taken on helping out. So anybody that would love to get involved with donations or blankets or tarps or dog, even dog food bags, prayer. Um, and we're also going to be helping out. They uh, bought a, a women's shelter. It's a house. And it's so awesome. There's three bedrooms. And in each bedroom is three beds with a dresser for each woman. But it's for homeless women. So I'll be involved in that as well. So anybody that wants to be, my heart is homeless. <laughs> so that's it. Awesome. So if you want to pitch in with water bottles, if you have your empty dog food bags and things like that, just bring them to the church and Jerry can get them each week for this ministry. Praise the Lord. That's, that's awesome. Did you know that your trash can become something that valuable to somebody? That's amazing. Amen. Let, yeah, let's, I don't have a dog, but some of you guys do. Let's save our bags, right? That's great. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to Christ Fellowship Church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Would you stand with me and let's come to the Lord in prayer today. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this day. Thank you that you're here with us, God. We, we give you glory. We lift you up and we pray that you'll come and touch us today. As we come before your throne, we pray that you'll touch our hearts today. We pray that you'll change our, our vision today, Lord God. We pray that you'll cause us to grow to be what you want us to be, Father. Lord, do things here that man cannot do. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise Jesus together. Never stop, you never stop working, even when 
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is. grateful for everything that Jesus is. Hallelujah. Man, he's so good. Does anybody just want to testify and say who Jesus is to you today? You good? Nobody? Yeah. He is, isn't he? He's it's wonderful. Yes. Isn't that great? He is our miracle worker. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, good. I like those freak outs. Anybody else just want to testify today? Yeah. that the truth anybody else want to testify this is you know I think people invented singing songs in church because nobody would testify you know or I would just sing another one but you know this is what we come for is to just remind one another how good God is we're not all singers but we're all lovers of Jesus. We're all those who have seen him work. We've all been changed by word, by touch. And so I'm grateful for your testimonies today. Just look around. You don't have to pat them or anything, but just say, I'm grateful for you.
Aren't you glad he didn't give up on you when you gave up on him?
right now. He's standing before you today, just look into his face. See the love in his eyes, the love that would push through anything to get to you. Jesus, we're thankful, so thankful for that love that you have for us, the reckless, fierce love that would kick walls down if we were in need. We thank you that you're here with us today. We thank you, Jesus, that you're greater than we are. That you are the
the King of kings and the Lord of lords and that you love us. So today, we just want to tell you, just look into his face right now and just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. There's none like you. Worship you, God. so good, isn't he? See, and then you can be seated. He's so good. Thank you, God. You know, I just want to say I'm grateful for Dion back there. He's stepped in and doing a great job in the booth, you know. This is, is this your second week? This is only his second week, and he's back there running it by himself, so I'm grateful. Amen. Amen. You guys doing good? We already had testimony time. I, it, so, he messed it up. He me <laughs> Because we have to be in a routine, don't we? We have to be in a routine, ritualistic every week. Amen. The kids can be dismissed for Sunday school. Let's pray for them as they go down. Lord Jesus, thank you for these children. Bless them, God. Bless the teacher. Just do an amazing work in their lives, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You guys ready to get to the word today? Let me see if I can get set up. Anybody else have another testimony that you didn't give earlier today? Who did? Sue. Amen. Amen. He's a good, good husband, isn't he? He's a good blessing. Well, amen. Hey, you're ready to get to the word today. Why don't you turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, verse 40, and we'll get there in just a little bit. Well, like Sue just said, today's Valentine's Day, and I want to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. How many of you guys like those cheesy Hallmark movies? Anybody like those nasty things? Oh, we got a, oh we've got a couple of hands up. <laughs> so today... This is probably, I would say, the second biggest time of the year for the cheesy Hallmark movies, closely followed behind Christmas, right? <laughs> Be thy, I'm being scolded. Be nice. <laughs> but if you notice, uh, all these Valentine's Hallmark movies are exactly like all of the Christmas Hallmark movies, only with a Valentine's backdrop, right? What's the common theme? The common theme is some beautiful person is completely and utterly lonely and alone for who knows what reason, right? And then they stumble across another beautiful person who, ap who also happens to be mysteriously lonely, and they end up together, and that's what Valentine's Day is all about, right? These love stories, they call them love stories, love movies, right? But I want to know, what about the real love? What about deeper love, right? I, want to, I, I would love to see a, a love movie that's about a couple who has been together for a long time, right? And they've weathered storms together. They've been through life together. They've seen every single flaw in each other's lives, yet they still love each other and they still stick together. That's a deeper love, amen? We, we see movies about puppy love all the time, skin deep. It's skin deep. How many of you grateful that God goes a little deeper than skin deep? How about an even deeper love than that? How about the unconditional love of God that goes deeper? It's not controlled by romance. It's not controlled by fleeting feelings. It's deeper than skin deep. The unconditional love of God where God loves you so much that he sent his only son to die on a cross for you. That's how much our God loves you. So on this Valentine's today, we're continuing on with our sermon series called What Man Can't Do, where we're focusing on what God can do, amen? And we're going to talk today about God's lavishing love. Everybody say lavishing love. And so here's what I want us to do. I want to take this Valentine's Day, and you're going to go home, and you're going to be with your honey, and you're going to have, and I, and I bless you in that, but I think we need to take a little bit of time to think about God's love. Amen. Amen. Are you with me in Mark chapter 140? Because what we're going to do is we're going to look at a story where Jesus showed that kind of love to a man with leprosy. Mark chapter 1 verse 40. 
And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. Now, we're going to stop right there for now. And today, I want to begin talking about uh, being moved, moved with compassion. Everybody say, moved with compassion. Now, if you look at this story, there are two players in this scene. The first player in this scene is the leper, and the second is Jesus. The first one is the one who is hopelessly and desperately in need. And the second player is our God who will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Amen. Aren't you grateful that that's who our God is? Now look back with me at verse 40 and let's look at this again. And a leper came to Jesus beseeching him and falling on his knees before him and saying, if you're willing, you can make me clean and moved with compassion Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Now, we've all heard about leprosy, haven't we? We all know that leprosy was and is a horrible skin disease. Did you know that even today there are around 208,000 people in the world with leprosy? Most of them are either in Africa or Asia. Well, if you look at the Old Testament law, we see that the Old Testament law made provisions for people with leprosy, and they actually described what people with leprosy were supposed to live like on a day-to-day basis. And one of the things they had to do was that if you had leprosy, you had to wear tattered clothes, old rags. That's all you were allowed to wear because everybody needed to look at you and say, that man has leprosy. You had to wear old rags for your clothes. They were actually commanded to keep their hair unkempt and nasty. Their hair had to be messy. Anytime someone would come within a certain distance of them, they had to shout out, unclean, unclean, so that everybody would know that you were a leper and that that's who you were, right? Now, according to Jewish customs and their interpretation of the law, these are some things that they believe people had to stay six feet away from a leper. Six feet. Does that sound familiar, guys? (laughs) They believe that leprosy was a direct punishment from God because of sin in the person's life. In fact, leprosy was so connected with sin that they actually believed that leprosy was the direct physical uh, manifestation of sin itself in a person's life. It's unbelievable. One rabbi boasted that he couldn't even, he, he wouldn't even eat an egg that was bought in the same street that a leper lived on. There was another rabbi that bragged about the fact that if he ran into lepers, he would throw stones at them to get them farther away from him, and that's how he kept from being close to lepers. If you were a leper, you were in this condition where you're, you were ostracized from the world. Not only did you have a severe, uh, horrible physical condition, but you were ostracized from the world. Not only that, but you had a mentality pounded into your head that said you are nothing but a despicable, dirty, rotten sinner. That's who you are. That's your identity. That's who you are. You're a rotten sinner. That's all you are. That's all you're ever going to amount to. That's who you are. And here's this man who was trained to think of himself that way. This man was trained. Who knows how long he had leprosy? We don't know that, but we know that it was pounded in his head. I'm nothing but a despicable, filthy, unlovable sinner. But how did Jesus treat him? How did Jesus treat him compared to the rest of the world? It says that he was moved with what? Compassion. It's, it's interesting because if you study this passage in the, in the Greek, you're going to find a, a couple of Greek words that are used. If you, re, if you read through the Greek text and the variants, you're going to see two different words that are used in this passage. And the first one means this. The first Greek word that we translate compassion means to feel deeply or viscerally to yearn, to have compassion and pity on something. You know what the second word means? It means to be provoked to anger or wrath. 
In fact, if you read that verse in the NIV, it says that Jesus was indignant. When he saw this man and this man cried out to Jesus, it says that Jesus was indignant. He was provoked to wrath. And this is who Jesus is, folks. Jesus, when Jesus saw this man in his state of misery, all of a sudden he looked upon this leper that everybody had ostracized, that, that had pounded into his head, that you're nothing but a despicable, unlovable sinner. And he had this disease that was terrible his body apart and Jesus was provoked to anger and moved with such a compassion and pity that he couldn't help but to reach out and help this man folks I want you to think about this for a moment okay Uh, this this man came before Jesus it says that he fell on his knees beseeching him begging There's nothing anybody can do for me but the miracle workers here. There's no door open for me but the way maker is here standing before me. Jesus, will you help me? Jesus, please help me. Nobody else can help me. Man can't help me. There's nothing that man can do, but maybe there's something you can do. Can God do what man can't do? And this is how Jesus found him, and it says that he was moved with compassion and pity to the point that he became anger and he was provoked to wrath, not because he was angry at the leper, but because he was angry at the situation that this leper was in. That's who Jesus is. That's who he is. Here's an interesting note about this passage right here. This story right here is the only time in the Bible where Jesus' willingness was called into question. Did you know that? It's the only time when anybody asked Jesus, if you're willing, you can do this. And what was Jesus' answer? His answer was a resounding, yes, I am willing, be cleansed. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Why? Because he was moved with compassion to the point to where he became angry within himself about this man's situation. That's who, aren't you glad that's who Jesus is? He's that way for us too. Amen. I want us to think about our current situation with a pandemic. One thing I left out about the leper is that one of the things that they were uh, commanded to do in the in the in the law was we 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 heard about that they had to wear rags, they had to keep their hair messy, but they also had to wear a mask over their mouth. Did you know that? And we're in a time right now where we have a pandemic across the entire world. I want to think about our certain situation in the same way. It looks kind of familiar in the same way. We have to stay six feet apart, right? We have to social distance six feet apart just like they had to. People freak out about being around someone who has COVID because who might possibly be sick. People freak out about it. And I want to tell you something. I want you to listen to me right now, okay? We need to use wisdom, amen? We need to use wisdom. We need to not be stubborn. We need to follow guidelines because we want to slow and stop the spread of this virus. We need to do these things, right? We need to do what we know to do to help out the situation. But I want you to listen to this on the other hand, okay? Because this is the whole point of what Jesus did right here. We need to not only uh, to, to, to use wisdom, but we need to not forget that we are here to love people, amen? We are not here to ostracize people. We are not here to make people feel like they're not a part. We can use wisdom, and at the same time, we can love people. We can still reach out to people. We can still help people in a time of need. I'm telling you, here's Jesus standing before this man. When everybody else was throwing stones at him to keep him away, Jesus didn't run away. What did Jesus do? He did what nobody would have expected, and he reached out and he touched this man. Who knows how long this man had ever experienced the touch. He'd gone without touch. And he reached out and touched this man. He said, yes, I am willing to be cleansed. Now, I'm not telling you to be reckless. I'm not telling you to, to, to be stupid, okay? <laughs> okay. We, we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We use wisdom. Did you know God gave us a brain? God gave us this brain. Did you know that? He did it so we can use it. 
So I'm not telling you to do crazy things, but I'm telling you that we need to have the heart of Jesus where we can reach out to somebody, whether it's through touch, whatever he leads you to do, whether it's through touch or whether it's not through touch and through other means, whatever God leads us to do, we need to have that heart where we love people just like Jesus loved people, where we feel bad for people who are in a bad situation. Remember what it mean, what, it, what it's like to, to care about other people. That's where we're at today. I want to give you a praise report. You heard it earlier, but I want to talk about it again. We can love people. We can pray for healing. We can reach out. We can help people. My, just a week and a half ago, uh, Uncle Russ Faust, it's Nikki's uncle, Diana's husband. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us believe that he wouldn't have made it a week and a half ago. We were praying, weren't we? Mark, Tammy, we were praying, weren't we? A lot of us were praying. We, some of us really looked at him and believed that he, there's no way he's going to make it. We thought that he was going to die. God turned it around. Amen. God turned it around and it wasn't a few days later after we prayed hard, man. It wasn't a few days later that they took that vent out and he did good with it. And he sat up and he ate and he began to talk and he was conscious again. And he's coming home in two days. Amen. So give God praise. Why is that? It's because God can do what man can't do, amen? amen? And it's because we have a heart to love and to pray and to believe for miracles, and we are not going to ostracize people. Even if we have to keep our distance, we're going to love people, amen? amen. We're going to love people, and we're going to do the works of Jesus. And so I want to continue with this story here, and I want to talk for a moment about a whole healing. Everybody say a whole healing. I, I remember a story about something that happened one May. It was the end of spring, the beginning of summer. And this May, Nikki and I had been dating for a while, and I took her to a nice dinner at the Eagle's Nest restaurant in downtown Indianapolis. And it was amazing. It's a restaurant way up on the top of the Hyatt Regency that spins around, you can see the, and it's not like a, not like a, like the scrambler at the fair. It's like really slow, but you can see the whole city. It's amazing. We got around to where Victory Field was right there. And right when we were facing Victory Field was when they set off all the fireworks. And it was, a, it's crazy seeing it from an above vantage point. That was really cool. We had our nice dinner together. We took a stroll to the park across the road, and uh, we sat on a bench right next to a beautiful fountain. And I got down on one knee, and I asked her, will you be my wife? And you know what she said? She said yes. And that was the, one of the best days of my life. That fountain's not there anymore. They tore it down, and they built the Simon Tower there. We don't have that fountain to visit anymore, but we have a giant painting on our wall of that fountain, and it's like the only painting in the world of that place where we have that memory where I've asked her to be my wife. And she gave her heart to me that day. But you know what? It wasn't for six months later that we actually got married. We had to wait from the time she said yes to the time we were married was six month period. And six months later, that was when I got all of her and she got all of me. Amen. And that's there. there how many of you can testify? Who, those of you who have experienced that, that there, it's so much of a deeper level when you come into that place where you get all of her and she gets all of you. And it's not just that you're dating anymore. It's all of a sudden now it's a it's it's a beautiful we're committed. We're one. God made two into one. Amen. I want to ask you today, how many of you want all of what God has for you? How many of you want all of what God has for you? God has so much for you, and we just scratch the surface sometimes, and God says, that's good, you're, you're getting this, you're, you're, you know, this is a good thing that's happening within you, but I've got so much more. I want to draw you so much deeper, and, and I want to run after God, amen? I want to get everything that God has for me. And I'm telling you, when this leper cried out to Jesus, he beseeched him on his knees, and he cried out to Jesus, make him clean. He didn't just want a little bit. He wanted all of what Jesus had for him, amen? amen. 
He didn't just receive a healing in his skin. He received the whole healing. He received the healing in his spirit, in his soul, in his body. I want you to go to verse 41. Let's read these two verses again. It says, moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand, and he touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. I want you to look at verse 42. I'm going to read that verse again. It says, immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. If you were to summarize that one verse, you might say, he was healed, right? That's a pretty bad summary of that verse, though, because two things happened. Look at this. The leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. The leprosy left him, and he He was cleansed. It's two different things. You see, he wasn't just healed in his body. God did a whole healing within him. According to the Old Testament law, if a leper were fortunate enough to recover from his disease, he had to present himself to a priest. And this is what it says. It's spelled out in Leviticus. You can go back and read about it. But what it says, basically, I'm going to give you just the basics, is that if leprosy was cured of his disease, he would come to the priest and he would bring two clean birds that were a sacrifice. And the priest would take one of the birds and he would put it under water and he would sacrifice that bird and he would take the other bird that was still living and he would dip it in the bloody water of the first sacrifice and he would set it free. And the amazing thing about that is the symbolism there. You know, they didn't even know it at the time, but what they were doing was they were symbolizing the fact that Jesus was going to come and die on our behalf as our sacrifice. Why? So that we could be set free and cleansed of our sins, amen, and our disease. And so he would bring these two birds, they would set the one free, they would kill the other, and then he would take the the water and sprinkle it seven times on the leper, and then after all that was done, he pronounced upon him, be thou made whole or be cleansed. And guess what happened after that? He was allowed to shave his hair instead of having messy hair. He was allowed to change into clean clothes. He was allowed to bathe and clean himself and make himself look nice. And at that moment, that's when the priest declared that you can become a part of our community again. That was the final seal of approval by the priest where he was telling the world, it's okay to accept this person back into our community. And it was when that, that was the this, this symbolic representation of now you don't have to have that mentality that you're nothing but a no good, rotten, unlovable sinner. Now you're cleansed. And so when he cried out to Jesus, he didn't just say, heal me of this skin disease, God. He said, I want to be clean. And Jesus said, I'm willing. And he said, be cleansed. Now, here's the cool thing about that, where Jesus says, be cleansed. In the Greek, it's the if you Did you know that the Old Testament a long time ago was translated into Greek from Hebrew, and it's called the Septuagint? And if you look in the Old Testament, it's the same Greek word that the priest used when he he pronounced be clean. It's the same Greek word that Jesus used when he pronounced over him be cleansed. Now here's the, just think about that for a moment. Everybody say whole healing. Whole healing. The physical healing was just the first step. The ritual was a spiritual healing that the person could be cleansed of sin and not have to have that mentality anymore. Now, I want you to notice, you know, Jesus, he he was moved with such a compassion that he couldn't help but to, 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 to be there for this man in his point of need. And I want to tell you this today. I just want you to listen to this today because Jesus has that same fierce, angry compassion for you too. He has the same fierce and angry compassion. Jesus, Jesus cares about every part of your heart. He cares about every part of your life. And even if you have grown in some areas but not others, he wants to bring healing into those parts too that are still hurting because he wants all of your heart. He wants all of your life. And I want to give him all of my life, and I want everything that he has for me too, amen, don't you? So I want to finish this story off and talk about telling the world. Everybody say telling the world. Now, let's read on in this story. Start with verse 43. And he sternly warned him and immediately sent him away. And he said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, 
but go show yourself to the priest and offer your cleansing for cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and he began to proclaim it freely and spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter his city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas and they were coming to him from everywhere. Now, you remember back, those of you who have a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend, remember back to when you were first in love and you could hardly contain it, man. I remember back, I remember when I felt such a life in me that I was able to get like two or three hours of sleep at night because I I was so excited and happy and full of life and love, right? I'll never forget the feeling I had when Nikki first said yes when I asked her to be my wife. I'll never forget that. Now, I want you to remember something else. I want you to remember back when you first said yes to Jesus. Do you remember back when you first said yes to Jesus and you felt the life of God surging within you? Do you remember the hope that you felt? Do you remember the freedom you felt? Do you remember feeling a pure love of God when you said yes to Jesus and he came rushing into your life and he changed you and made you into a child of God? You were born again. Do you remember that feeling when you first said yes to Jesus, that feeling of love, uh, you know, uh, the freedom you felt. Now, I want you to imagine being full, so full of love and life and being told to not talk to anyone about it because that's what Jesus said to this man. He had just been healed. He would just been set free. He had just been relieved of his mentality that he's nothing but a no-good sinner, unlovable. He was completely cleansed. He was changed that day. And Jesus said, don't tell anybody about it. Now, I want you to think about what that would be like. This, it, was, it was more than this man could contain. And what did he do? He went about telling the world about this Jesus who cared about him so much that even in his despicable state that Jesus actually reached out and touched him during this time and miraculously healed him. He couldn't contain it because of the love of God. And he went around telling everybody that he could see. I'm telling you, Jesus tried to run and hide and everybody was flocking him. That's the love of God that he has for us. Amen. Here's the deal, guys. We need to remember that kind of love that we have for Jesus. We need to remember our first love. We need to go back to our first love, who's Jesus, and remember that. We need to focus on being so full of love for him and so full of his life that we can't contain it. We can't keep it to ourselves. I want to tell you something. Spreading the gospel is not pointing your finger at somebody and telling them how wrong they are. It's not what spreading the gospel is, guys. The gospel, gospel literally means good news. Spreading the gospel is being so full of the love of God, so full of the goodness of God that you can't contain it. And all you can do is go around telling everybody how good God is. And I'm not bragging about it because he wants to do the same thing in you. I can't help but to tell you, because I'm not looking down on you. I just want you to experience the same things that I've experienced. That's what the gospel is, guys. That's what evangelism is all about, is being so full of God that it overflows into other people's lives and you can't help but to tell them that's what this leper did and that's what we need to remember in our lives. We need to remember and focus on that love that we have for God. So on this Valentine's Day, as I finish up today, let's remind ourselves of the ultimate love of God. Let's remember the love that we have for him. Let's remember the love that he lavishes on us. And I'm gonna read this last verse to you and then we're gonna be done for today. Listen. It says this, 1 John 3, 1. This is the, from the NIV. I like the way they word it. See what, a great lo- see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. God wants to lavish his love on you, amen. Aren't you grateful for that? Let's remember his love for us. He's here to touch you in your point of need. He's here to do great things in your life that man cannot do. And we're going to be so overflowing with that that we're going to tell the world. Amen. And stand with me today. Lord Jesus, you're so amazing. You love us. You 
love us so much that you reach out to us in every moment, every situation. So God, I pray that you'll touch each person here, everybody here. You know what's going on in their lives. You know more than I do. So wherever they're at, whatever their need is, I pray that you'll touch them and that you'll be that help. If their need is that they need to rejoice because things are so good, that you'll be there to rejoice with them. God, if they're, if they're, if they're calling out to you because their heart's hurting, Lord God, I pray, Father, for healing. Everybody just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Does anybody have any prayer needs today before we go on? Sue. Yes. Yeah, we're going to lift up Joyce Bale. She fell and hurt her leg, has a hairline fracture. She's having a hard time getting around. So, God, we lift her up to you in Jesus' name. We pray for a quick recovery. We pray for healing. We pray, God, for encouragement. We pray for strength. We pray for provision. We pray that you'll protect her. We pray, God, that you'll be with her. We pray that you'll surround her, God, in Jesus' name. God, we pray for Russ Vale too, Lord, that you'll be with him and encourage him and help him not to worry about his wife. Just give him a supernatural peace through this. Thank you, Jesus. God, we pray for Russ Faust. Thank you for this miracle. Thank you for this miracle. Pray that as he comes home that you'll protect him, keep him safe, surround him. Be with him. Help him to continue to recover completely, Father, in Jesus' name. And then, do we have any other prayer needs today? Amen. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord as I pronounce a priestly blessing over you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Be blessed this week. Let's bring our ties to the Lord after we dismiss, but let's sing this song together. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Or turn his face toward you. And keep Good week, everybody. We do the amen, but I'm about to choke. So, so God bless you. Have a great week.